so I'm out on a Southern California road heading east from San Diego, Northern San Diego area to a, a popular canyon spot. A lot of sport bikes come out here. But uh, you're avoiding some of the really tight twisty roads. A lot of cruises come out here too. I'm used to being on this road on that S1000R and as you can see in front of me, there's Corollas, there's Camrys, there's vans, there's 18 wheelers, caravans, a lot of cars painted white, I don't know why. But it's frustrating on a bike with that much power and that much capability. So the, the 50 plus miles out here is well, I'm either passing double lines and riding rather recklessly or I'm frustrated trying to remain within the confines of legal standards I haven't taken the fat boy S out here yet although I think it's his natural habitat because as you can see I am comfortable behind a Civic and I'm not frustrated. Look at this, it's, it's warning me 55. Ah. Those signs are ridiculous. I don't know what their point is. Just in case I can't see my own speedometer, is that what you're trying to tell me? There must be good research to back those things up. You know, people, people become more self-conscious of their speed. To be honest, I think they're not more conscious of their speed. I think they're more conscious of the consequences. No one likes an eye in the sky. I think that uh, is supposed to instill a sense of paranoia as if their speed has been documented in some way, shape, or form. It's a bunch of bull. Nice and comfortable. I could just go on forever if it weren't for this seat. So a couple of things that have come up, I mean the major thing that has come up with this bike in the first couple thousand miles, well other than me becoming paranoid about heat because of uh, all the banter on the internet about how hot the engines run and traffic and all that, I do have heat paranoia. I don't know if it's warranted or not. There's two ways to go about that. You do something about it. Or you ignore it, you ride the bike, and when it fails, it fails, and you fix it. I'm not sure which route I'm going to take yet, but uh, that's one thing that's been on my mind. Another thing is, I'm doing 50 miles an hour right now. Thank God I'm not on the S1000R, because i would be going crazy behind this Corolla. But, um, you know, when you bring this bike on the highway, when the speed limits are higher, it hit those brakes. It's a tough, it's a doozy. Uh, the wind becomes an issue, especially in this laid back position. The S1000 is a naked bike and I even put a small, you know, windshield on that. It wasn't absolutely necessary, but it's, it's better with it. I don't mind. I actually like the naked sensation. I like being in the wind. But, uh, one of the problems with that is the positioning on this particular bike it puts you in a windsock position. I'm leaned back right now. I'm just kind of lounged. My feet are out in the footboards. My torso is flexed forward and it creates a pocket in your chest and gut area. So once the speeds get high enough, I've mentioned this before, around 80 miles an hour in particular, 75, 80 and above, you get a lot of resistance. So you're either flexing your torso forward and uh, sort of uh, flexing your lower extremities to get better leverage on the bike while using more of your arms. And you're sort of fighting it. I mean, I think the average man or woman could do this for a long time. Hours, hours on end. It's not something that's gonna throw you off the bike. It's not gonna rip your arms off. It's just a comfort thing, really. And it becomes somewhat uncomfortable 
after a certain period of time. So you can take the wind off you or you can support your back. One of the two. You can get a wind like or both. You can get a windshield and a backrest. Or do one or the other. I do think it's a shame to put a windshield on this thing. I, I like the air, I like to feel it. Eventually that may happen, but I'm leaning towards getting a seat with a backrest on it. That doesn't look so hot either. But in the end, no one's taking pictures of me to put in a magazine, and nobody ever will. So what am I trying to prove? So I think I start off with a seat with a backrest. There's so many options out there. A lot of talk about what's best. I'll put a video down as uh, soon as I get one, maybe in a couple of weeks. So I grabbed my first ticket on the Fat Boy S yesterday. I took off from a light in a 55 mile an hour zone. As a red light, I split, so I was in front. And I took off and I, I just thought of my ride, so I was full of piss and vinegar. And I went through the first couple of gears, part of the first three. Um, it basically, I hit 75, I guess. I didn't even know I hit that fast. I looked out at my speedo, realized I was doing 70 and a 55. This is just after the takeoff. You know, these, these Harleys really can up to 70 or so, they can get there pretty quick because of all that torque. I was in my speedo 70, so I started backing off, you know, planning to get back down to under 65, where it was safe. And I look at my rear view, I notice the bike behind me. And I'm probably down in the 60s now, I look at my rear view again, and I see the bike with, uh, basically police lights going off. And I, it, the first decision I had was, really? I mean, I know technically I was above the speed limit, and, you know, by law, if you're above the speed limit for a one-thousandth of a second, then that's a ticket. I mean, it, or it could translate into a ticket, but I think by common practice, in evaluating an individual, you kind of look for a more prolonged pattern than someone just accelerating, crossing the speed limit, and then immediately slowing down. His story was, he saw me accelerating, 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 and as I continued to blow past 70, he said, whoa, I better stop this cowboy. Uh, as if I was about to uh, kill somebody on a clearly open highway in front of me, staying in my own lane. It's not like I did a burnout or was swerving in, in a school zone or something. Anyway, I, uh, I question this particular police officer's monthly quota for tickets on this incident. I respect those men and women in the broad perspective, but like anybody else, people have their moments. So I'll, I'll pay the ticket and uh, I'll take off faster next time. Just have some fun with it. You guys want to see me pass this guy? I bet you do. Scooting up the seat a little bit here. Problem is shifting your butt on this seat. Because you have to, because it scrapes so easily. And you can uh, get through corners much quicker that way. But the problem is, because of where your feet are positioned, you, uh, it's hard to lift your butt off the seat and make that transition. So you wind up sliding your butt and that disturbs the bike. So, you know, not exactly the prettiest or smoothest maneuver. I don't know, man. I mean, those, that, those look like wooden beams and they don't look very secure. It's freaking me out, dude. not look very secure and you're doing 33 I, I can't pass you I will thank you for doing that in a corner I appreciate it give you a wave anyway
feel like I'm sliding over on the couch when I shift my butt. Maybe I just shouldn't be shifting. What do you guys do on these ollies? You guys shift your weight? You shift your butt? I mean, I know it's gotta help in terms of getting around the corner quicker without so much lean angle. I'm wondering if it's worth it at this point. Fresh pavement looks wet, has that glistening character to it. Just freaks me out. Nothing to watch out for. My normal lines cut these cut these uh, divider lines pretty close. You see these reflectors in the road? Those appear to be lifted off the ground at least a centimeter, if I'm not mistaken. I never actually got down on my knees to check it out. Yesterday I caught one when I was leaning through a corner. That was just a bad line, as you can tell. Hey, yesterday I caught one leaning through a corner. It just felt bad. It felt real bad like dangerous bad. Oh, that was a hard hit. Got to buy thicker boots. Woo. Ride it through, baby. Um, and I think that could take you off your bike. I don't know. They've got a slope on them. Thankfully, they get a slope. So it probably just raise your uh, your footboard. It is nice though, it's nice to be out here on a cruise as opposed to an adrenaline filled craze fest. I think, I don't know what red line is in these things, I heard it was 58, let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it cuts out around 57, just lose power. Funny how long I've owned this bike. I didn't know exactly where Red Line was. Yeah, to me, it's not what it's about. I mean, you lose your power before you get to Red Line anyway, so why would you bounce it off Red Line? Short shifting is where it's at. If you're that challenged in your sensory motor function, but you can't maintain 55 miles an hour on this wide open, smooth paved, dry road probably just wrap it up wrap it up what is that a skylock is that a skylock you, you ride in there I haven't seen one of those in years usually they're aqua place it's 
funny how the place is full but empty. California amazes me. You go from ocean to this. Like 50 miles.